Welcome back to the Hard Run Box News Corner. It's been a while since we've done a news video on the channel, but to be honest, that's because there hasn't been a ton of news worth talking about in the PC hardware space for a little while. So rather than clog up your feed with boring news videos, we decided to take a rest for a while. But today, or rather last night for us here in Australia, we did see a rather interesting product announcement from AMD that's worth talking about. So in today's news video, we'll be focusing on the new Ryzen 5000 G series of APUs, plus some other topics later in the video. So specs, product details, few performance slides from AMD and our performance expectations based on our existing testing of Ryzen 5000 APUs. Let's talk the basics first. Today, AMD are announcing and releasing six Ryzen 5000 G series APUs, but you won't be able to go and buy one of these on a retail shelf as a boxed processor just yet, as initially the launch is for OEMs only. But the really good news for enthusiast PC builders is that AMD has said Ryzen 5000 G processors will be available to purchase for DIY buyers later this year. No firm release date on that, but they have committed to make it happen. And just quickly before we get into the SKUs, this is a different launch strategy to AMD's prior Ryzen 4000 G series APUs. These APUs were only ever available for OEM systems, and AMD never officially announced DIY market availability at any point. They never shut the door on a DIY release, but ultimately the launch was exclusive to the OEM market. Today's announcements for the Ryzen 5000 G series do include an official statement about DIY availability, so it's more a question of when it will happen, not if it will happen like the Ryzen 4000 G series. This means the desktop DIY market will transition straight from AMD's Zen Plus Ryzen 3000 G APUs like the Ryzen 5 3400G to Zen 3 APUs. That's a pretty big leap. So the Ryzen 5000 G series is based on AMD's Cezanne die, which is also being used for their Ryzen Mobile 5000 series of processors, at least the majority of them. The major feature addition here compared to Renoir, their prior design used for Ryzen 4000 APUs, is the update from Zen 2 to Zen 3 processing cores. This comes with the IPC benefits we've talked about extensively on the channel in previous videos, as well as the unification of the CPU into a single CCX, a doubling of L3 cache from 8 megabytes to 16 megabytes is also a feature. The same maximum of eight processing cores are available here. Other aspects to the design remain pretty similar to Renoir. The die itself is still being built on TSMC's 7 nanometer manufacturing node, and the integrated graphics solution is still based on Vega with a total of eight compute units. Memory support, the media encoding engine, and the PCIe lane configuration is also largely unchanged. However, when these chips hit the DIY market, this will present an enormous improvement to AMD's APU offering. Compared to Ryzen 3000, nearly every area will be updated. The shift from four Zen Plus cores to eight Zen 3 cores is absolutely massive for CPU performance, and the optimized integrated graphics solution, while still vaguer in nature, should also be somewhat faster. As for SKUs, there are six Ryzen 5000G APUs in total, although really there are only three base designs here as AMD are offering each configuration in a G model at the full 65 watts, as well as a lower power GE variant at 35 watts with a lowered base clock as well. So let's talk about them. The fastest Ryzen 5000G processor is the Ryzen 7 5700G, which packs the full 8 cores and 16 threads of Zen 3, with a base clock of 3.8 GHz and a boost clock of 4.6 GHz. We also get an unlocked GPU with all 8 compute units clocked up to 2.0 GHz. Next down the stack is the Ryzen 5 5600G, which packs 6 cores and 8 threads, a base clock of 3.9 GHz, and a boost of 4.4 GHz. The GPU has one fewer compute unit, with 7 unlocked, and a 1.9 GHz clock speed. Then we get to the Ryzen 3 5300G, a quad-core design with 8 threads, base clock of 4 GHz, boost of 4.2 GHz, along with 6 Vega compute units unlocked, clocked up to 1.7 GHz. The Ryzen 7 and 5 parts come with the full 16 MB of L3 cache, while the Ryzen 3 parts get 8 MB. As AMD uses a totally different design and silicon for their CPUs and APUs, there are several differences between the Ryzen 5000 G series and the standard Ryzen 5000 parts. So this isn't like Intel's processor lineup where the models with and without integrated graphics are basically the same. The most obvious one is in the packaging. Cezanne, like AMD's previous APU designs, is monolithic, so all elements are included in a single piece of silicon. 
In contrast, Vermeer, which is the desktop CPU design, features an IO die with chiplets. Neither one is necessarily better or worse, but AMD do have different design approaches for different products. In terms of specifications, there are some major differences. AMD's Ryzen 5000 APUs only include up to 16 megabytes of L3 cache and only feature PCIe 3.0 support from the CPU. We still get 20 lanes accessible to the GPU and storage, just not the newer PCIe 4.0 standard that we get on their newer CPUs. As for cache, 16 megabytes is an increase on their previous APU offerings, and the unified CCX design is a huge improvement as well, but the desktop lineup offers double that cache again with 32 megabytes in up to the 8 core models. Naturally, the desktop line also includes 12 and 16 core models, which isn't possible with AMD's APUs. Aside from that, there are also some minor clock speed differences. The Ryzen 5 5600X clocks 200MHz high in its boost state than the Ryzen 5 5600G, despite the 5600G having a higher base frequency. Similarly, the Ryzen 7 5800X clocks 100MHz higher than the Ryzen 7 5700G. It's interesting here that AMD don't appear to be using the absolute best Cezanne silicon available for these desktop APUs, as we know the same die used in mobile parts can clock as high as 4.8GHz, which would have enabled clock speed parity with the desktop CPU line. Of course, as these are OEM parts, we don't have any idea on pricing, we'll have to wait until the DIY launch later in the year, but there will be an interesting choice for buyers to make between a Ryzen CPU or APU. The CPU line provides PCIe 4.0, double the L3 cache, and slightly higher clock speeds, while the APU provides integrated graphics of course. There may also be some differences between the chiplet and monolithic designs that will impact performance, but that will take benchmarking to uncover. Motherboard support for the Ryzen 5000 G-Line includes X570, B550, and A520. Older motherboards from the 400 series like X470 and B450 may also support these APUs, but that depends on the motherboard manufacturer and whether they want to include support. As for performance, AMD did provide a range of performance slides comparing Ryzen 5000 G APUs to their Ryzen 4000 G equivalents, as well as Intel 10th Gen processors. The comparisons to 10th Gen though aren't really relevant anymore as Intel has just launched new 11th Gen parts, which feature both a new CPU and GPU design. Still, these are the performance claims AMD are making. Overall, I wouldn't expect performance to be too far away from what we are seeing in AMD's Ryzen 5000 mobile processors, such as the Ryzen 9 5900HX, which basically has the same specifications as the Ryzen 7 5700G, just with a default TDP of 45 watts, not 65 watts. Here's how the 5900HX performs in Cinebench R20, and I would expect a bit higher performance when running at 65 watts. Ultimately, I think performance won't be as fast as the Ryzen 7 5800X, but it should still get reasonably close and pack the benefit of integrated graphics if needed. Now you might be wondering, why is AMD launching even more products that use TSMC's 7nm node when they can't deliver sufficient supply to meet demand for their existing products? Why are AMD allocating some of their Cezanne supply to OEM desktops when they can't fulfill demand for this exact same die in laptops? And these are pretty good questions, however there is a little bit more to play here. One aspect to consider is that for a while now, AMD has been supplying Ryzen 4000G APUs to OEMs for use in pre-built desktop systems. It doesn't make any sense for AMD to continue producing and supplying that chip for the OEMs that are buying them when they could use their exact same 7 nanometer allocation to produce a newer, faster APU instead. Yes, producing this chip instead of other things will hurt supply for those other processors. However, what is likely happening is a simple swap over of allocation from a Zen 2 APU design for OEMs to a Zen 3 APU design for OEMs. And that's a smart move as AMD could then charge more for the same chip family or assist their OEM partners with sales as OEMs can now market a newer generation processor in their systems. The whole supply situation is a delicate balancing act for AMD right now though, so we'll have to wait and see how this one plays out. It's also highly likely that their supply constraints are the reason behind AMD pushing back the DIY launch of these chips until later in the year when they are expecting supply to improve. While they can swap out the OEM demand for Ryzen 4000G with Ryzen 5000G and not cause too many issues, Adding a new set of DIY customers for these chips would increase demand, and AMD would probably struggle to supply enough silicon. 
As well as launching Ryzen 5000 APUs, AMD also launched two new OEM-only desktop CPUs, the Ryzen 9 5900 and Ryzen 7 5800. We've seen AMD do this sort of thing before, and there really isn't much interesting stuff going on here. The Ryzen 9 5900 is a Ryzen 9 5900X, but with a 65W TDP, 100MHz lower boost clock, and a base clock of 3GHz. The Ryzen 7 5800 is a 5800X, but with a 65W TDP, 100MHz lower boost clock, and a 3.4GHz base clock. That's really all there is to it, slightly slower versions of the X models for the OEM market. Occasionally it's been possible to purchase these CPUs through retail channels, depending on the retailer and region, although usually it's not an official retail release, it's just the retailer deciding to sell OEM chips to the public. We'll see if that happens this time, but yeah, nothing too amazing. If you wanted to know what DDR5 chips look like, well, Galax's OC Lab has given us a close-up look of an entire tray's worth from Micron. The OC Lab at Galax tends to handle their Hall of Fame products, so you'd think these chips would be used for high-performance DDR5 memory modules for next-generation platforms. Rumors currently suggest that Intel's upcoming older lake design will use DDR5, as will AMD when they transition to a new AM5 socket along with next-generation processors. An image of the chips isn't particularly interesting, but if you were ever curious how DRAM chips get packaged and sent to companies assembling them into actual sticks, well, here you go. It also shows solid progress towards DDR5, which we've been expecting for some time now. AMD is warning customers in China of a potential Radeon RX 580 recall scam. According to official statements released by AMD and XFX on their respective social media pages and translated by Tom's Hardware, the scam involved sending RX 580 owners a notice that the card was being recalled due to a manufacturing defect. The scammers would then attempt to exchange the RX 580 with the victim for an inferior NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 Ti or GTX 1060 3GB claiming those GPUs offer better performance, which isn't true. Alternatively, the victim could accept a cash refund. AMD says that the RX 580 is not being recalled after four years on the market and doesn't have any manufacturing defects. AMD will be pursuing legal action against the alleged scammers for illegal use of their branding. The idea behind this scam appears to be to collect graphics cards for mining. The Radeon RX 580 in either its 4GB or 8GB configurations is a much better GPU for mining than either the GTX 1050 Ti or GTX 1060 3GB, in addition to just being faster overall for gaming. So the scammers seem to be buying these inferior, cheaper and likely more available GPUs and attempting to swindle legitimate RX 580 owners out of their cards, effectively swapping a bad mining GPU for a decent one. It's clever, but running this sort of alleged operation is clearly illegal and scummy. It also shows the links that some dodgy people are willing to go to make a quick buck from mining or flipping GPUs. With that a steady stream of GPUs coming into retail markets, the next best option appears to be just trying to hurt legitimate buyers even further with scams, so yeah, that's just wonderful, isn't it? TFT Central have provided an update to what to expect from Samsung's upcoming Odyssey G9 monitor refresh. They've spotted a product page on Chinese retailer Taobao that shows the Odyssey G9 S49 AG 95NC, which keeps many of the original's features like a 5120x1440 resolution, 240Hz refresh rate, VA technology, and 1000R curvature. What this new model will be receiving, though, is a full update to properly support HDR. According to the product page, the new G9 will use a Quantum Matrix Mini LED backlight with 2048 local dimming zones, which should provide great HDR performance on an LCD panel. It's also listed with Display HDR 2000 support, a spec that hasn't even been announced yet, but would include higher peak brightness than the current top tier of Display HDR 1400. None of these things have been officially announced yet, so this information is just coming from product page, and the price is very high at over US dollars when converted, so we'll have to wait and see how this monitor shapes up when it's officially announced. Let's hope that it's not $4,000. Anyway, that's it for this week's News Corner. If you're interested in getting more of our news analysis whenever interesting stuff pops up to talk about, then you can subscribe to the channel, give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and consider supporting us through our Patreon and Floatplane accounts. Links to those are in the description below. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.